to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. Hey there, live from the Loft 100 Studios, the brand new Loft 100 Studios. Brand new. Sunny San Diego, California. Big Biz Show's on there. Great to have you along today on our very first broadcast from uh, the new Loft 100 Studios, and we're very excited. We even brought in a band, the uh, the Day Trader Trio, or the Day Trader Quattro. Can I see you? Can you get a little, you get a little sample here? Yeah. Wow, that's nice. All right, beautiful. Actually, actually I, wow. I brought the band in for uh, I brought the band in for uh, Les Goldman, sure. who is uh, uh, one of my longtime uh, friends, clients, and, uh, and and a and a Nasdaq company that you guys are all well aware of. And we'll we'll talk about the studio again in a little bit. But it, it obviously, as you see some of the camera shots here, it's amazing. These guys, you know, Jared Coleman, Mike Larson, Brian Parenteau, the, all of their crew uh, at Loft 100 Studios did such a great job at putting all this together. So, uh, want a, a big round of applause for those guys. Uh, but let's get right to it because uh, Les Goldman, uh, who I, as I mentioned, I consider a friend and and also. Uh, a client, a company that, we, that we've been uh, focusing on for some time, uh, is the uh, Senior Vice President and General Counsel for a company called Northwest Biotherapeutics. Northwest Biotherapeutics uh, is in the game of, of dealing with brain cancer, and they've been with us for, I'm going to say, three or four years now, and we've seen them grow and progress, and I'll tell you what, um, you know, their, their, their stock has, 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 has progressed with them, their revenue has progressed with, or, or their, their balance sheet's progressed with them, but also their, their, the arc of their story with respect to what's going on in, in dealing with this GBM horrible brain cancer uh, is, has, uh, has moved along really, really impressively. So I'm going to have Les join us here uh, via Zoom. Uh, by the way, stock symbol NWBO, NWBO, it's, it's nwbio.com. And uh, Les, you're the first guy. We threw a whole party for you, and I think, uh, I think we're going to have a statue for you. Great to see you, man. How are you? I am uh, pretty good. I'm still recovering from a little bronchitis, but... Hopefully uh, we'll get through it, and it's an honor to be back on your in your brand new studio. Congratulations! Well, and uh, the last time I had a marching band uh, associated with what I'm doing was uh, 60 years ago at the University of Michigan. <laughs> Well, obviously we are uh, obviously we are uh, uh, moving in a different direction, having uh, having a rock and roll <laughs> band here for you just today. Also, Mike Costa here uh, joining us here in the interview today. But Les, I want to start off uh, just for the audience who hasn't heard from you in a while. Talk about the, the horrible uh, malady of GBM and what it does, survival rates, uh, 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 quality of life and such when you're, when you're diagnosed with it. So let's talk about what you guys are treating and then let's talk about how things are going with respect to the therapy. Well, uh, we uh, announced our top line data last November uh, and uh, it's regarded by most people in the business as a landmark trial there hasn't been a significantly, statistically significant and meaningful life extension for GBM, which is the most lethal form of brain cancer. Uh, it, it could kill you within even a couple of months. The median overall survival uh, is about uh, seven months uh, for until a recurrence and about uh, 14 or 15 months uh, until you're no longer with us. Uh, and there's been no major advance, uh, and I can get into some of the reasons why on that. Uh, if you want to ask me a few questions about the presentation we made at ASCO a week ago Saturday, but, but we now have a better idea about why we're getting the results we're getting in terms of the mechanism of action. But, but what we've got uh, is a uh, median overall survival that adds to recurrent GBM, which is uh, the quickest killer, uh, about uh, five months. And, and uh, depending on whether you measure from uh, the, the, the uh, randomization or from surgery, which most of the physicians measure from surgery, uh, three, three to four months for, uh, the, uh, for the initially diagnosed, but most significantly, the long-term survival uh, is uh, for initially diagnosed is is over 
about two and a half times what you'd expect to see on the normal standard of care. And so it's a doubling or a tripling. And in the case of recurrent, it's also of the same magnitude. And I'll never forget when we displayed these results to one of our top doctors, the gentleman and great professor at King's College in London. He jumped up from his chair when he heard the long-term survival statistics and said, look, I operate every night till 11 o'clock at night. He threw up his hands like an American touchdown. He's originally from Iran. And he said, screaming at the top of his lungs, this changes everything. Right now, everybody wants to know what's the prognosis. I tell them you may die within three months and you'd be lucky if you live 13. And now I can tell them you have something like a 18 to 20% chance to live five years. That gives people hope. That means that there'll be better patients and they'll get better faster anyway. And it completely changes the psychological framework of treating this dreadful disease. And I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, anyway, that's just an insight into how frustrated the world has been with this major, major disease, which in there are about 25,000 new people a year in all of Europe and the United States that come down with it. And then something like five times that they come down with recurrent because almost everybody who ever gets the disease gets recurrent either a little bit earlier or a little bit later than that seven month recurrent period. Unless this is called GBM, correct? Yes. Okay. Les, it's Mike Costa. You talked about the veracity of how terrible this disease is and how quickly somebody could be unfortunately gone once diagnosed. I have to assume that early detection is paramount. Well, you can't always tell for sure, but sometimes early detection doesn't make that much difference. Certainly, the earlier you can detect it, the better off you'll be. But we, in addition to the 331 patients in our clinical trial at 90 sites on both sides of the Atlantic in the US, the UK, Germany, and Canada, we've treated about another 370 compassionate treatment patients, particularly most of them in the UK where they allow us to do that, a new plant was built that's already been certified for commercial production. And we get the same statistics with them. We've got real world experience with those other patients who are not as in strict a situation as the trials are. But the results have been very consistent across the board. And it does appear, if you look at the data, and we were published, our results were published in a peer reviewed top journal, JAMA, that's the Journal of the American Medical Association, back last November. And we have been picked on by certain people who do not have an interest in having something that works and is much cheaper and longer lasting. Once again, Les Goldman is our guest. He is a Senior Vice President, General Counsel of Northwest Biotherapeutics. NWBO is their stock symbol, nwbio.com. You hear me talk about him literally every day, a number of times a day on a, different, a ton of different platforms. Uh, but, but Les, let's talk real quick about ESCO and then we're, then we're gonna spend uh, next week ASCO, and come back on talking about it. ASCO, 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 yeah, you're right. Okay, well, uh, if uh, we're gonna come back, I mean, it takes probably five or 10 minutes to run through, but the bottom line is, uh, proteomics is the study of proteins. And we have done an in-depth analysis uh, with uh, a good number of our patients to find out that the way our, our uh, vaccine works uh, brings out uh, a whole lot more weapons than we realized it did in larger quantities and more actively. And I think we could spend some useful time going through the exquisite nature of the natural way we stimulate the system by making use of all the weapons in the immune system instead of some targeted or some poisonous weapons. Well, that, open, that opens up therapy for other diseases potentially, you know, from, that's at least that. Well, well that, that, that would be getting ahead of the game, but just understanding how ours works and how it could work on all solid tumor cancers is a good starting point. And it, when you see the exquisite uh, dance 
that our immune system over years of evolution uh, have, has developed, it, it, it gets you even more excited about our really good results. And it provides an insight into what the future could hold as well. But uh, I, I can't get into the whole thing right well, now. Well, well, I'll tell you. And so it, next, next, worth, next week. It's worth a whole session. Let's, let's spend next week, when you're on the air, going through that ASCO uh, conference to talk about that. Les Goldman, thank you so much for your time, for being so generous with your time. It's tough to get that guy because he, uh, he uh, spends uh, day and night working. It's an amazing story. Well, I've talked to him at 10 o'clock at night Pacific right. time. I've talked to him at 5 a.m. Pacific time. I mean, and he's on the East Coast. The guy's not some. <laughs> Northwest Bio, NWBO, NWBio.com. More Big Biz. Welcome to the new studio. We'll see you in a minute.